Hey everyone, it's Mr. K, and uh, this is your uh, lesson in land and climate. Uh, in class, we started out with the do now, and I'll just show you where you can uh, get this. Um, I mentioned the website, and if you were not here or if you lost the paper, all you have to do is go to packet one, and you'll get all of the papers that you need uh, for this lesson. Uh, and I'll show you the link in a minute uh, to this uh, website, um, but you should have it already. Anyway, back to the uh, PowerPoint. Um, if we started out with the graphic organizer uh, with uh, geography. Not going to talk too much on that because that was something that could be done in class and the information is on the printout. Um, here is the link to the website. So if you needed that printout, you could go to that. Uh, just copy that down and put it in your address bar on the browser and you should be able to get anything uh, within this PowerPoint. Um, you can even download this specific PowerPoint. Um, everything that you need. Um, so as I said before, the, uh, the title of this is Land and Climate and we're going to be very specific um, and we're not going to deviate or move away from that. Uh, the goals. This is a very important page. If we accomplish all of this, uh, we've done the lesson successfully, and that's learn about the many landforms of North America. There are many, and where they are, and identify the vocabulary terms, geography, landform, plateau, canyon, climate, and equator. Uh, we're going to start out with the landforms of North America. And this is the map that we're going to be using. And uh, North America has many landforms. Uh, a landform is a feature on the surface of the land, such as a mountain, valley, or plain. And this map kind of breaks down all of the different geographic regions that we have in North America. Landforms give, us, uh, give each part of the country its special character. Uh, and if you traveled across the United States, you would see many different landforms. And I've actually got a pretty cool uh, video to show you and I'm not going to show you within this video you really can't show a video within a video but once again the link to this video um, you know is here or you could go to the uh, website and I have a link to it there and I do recommend that you watch it it's uh, a car that's going across the country uh, basically it's a, uh, a several week trip but it's broken down into five minutes because they put it on time lapse or fast forward but you could see all of the different regions, and the car goes from Florida all the way to California. So anyway, let's get into the uh, landforms. Let's go from west coast to east coast to learn about all the different landforms within the continental United States. Um, continental uh, meaning excluding uh, the, well, we're not talking about Canada up here or Mexico down here. Um, and Hawaii is in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, so that's not a part of the continent. Uh, and Alaska is separated uh, by Canada. It would be somewhere up here. Uh, so we're really focusing on the 48 continental states. Pacific ranges. So we're talking about the area right over in here. And again, we're going to go from west to east. Um, Pacific ranges. The, it's a smaller mountain range in the west coast of the United States. These mountains are part of the coast ranges and uh, the higher, more mountainous uh, Sierra Nevada range. Uh, but probably the most famous mountain in this range is a very small one, and it's the one right next to um, Hollywood, and it's got the Hollywood sign on it. Um, but this is the type of terrain that you would see in the Pacific ranges. Um, again, it's a very narrow area, uh, mountainous. Um, and here is an illustration from the textbook. Uh, the Coast Ranges and the Sierra Nevada, which are a little bit higher. Basin and Range. It's a smaller mountain range in the west coast of the United States. These mountains are part of the Coast Ranges and higher, uh, more mountainous uh, Sierra Nevada range. Uh, that was actually this. Basin and Range. This is the next one, and actually my favorite section of the country. Um, Arizona, New Mexico, um, you know, all of the areas that you see Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner run around. Um, you know that would be basin and range. It can it contains desert canyons and bowl-like basin areas. What do I mean by bowl-like basin areas? Uh, basically, it's like uh, valleys. You know, the, the picture a bowl on flat land and you know just going down. And 
it's a valley just like that. Um, the basin and range landform has many plateaus. So these in the background are plateaus. Notice it's got steep cliffs going all the way up and flattened land at the top. These could be very small or these could be very large, as you'll find out really soon. And once again, um, you know, whenever you think of basin and range, think of Wile E. Coyote and the Roadrunner. Uh, and I'm sure you've seen them on uh, cartoons. But this is a plateau. This is a, uh, the land formation of a plateau. Um, you will be tested on this. Oh, and any word that you see in red, uh, that's a definition. So you know you have to uh, know the meaning of that. So just know that this is a plateau, um, st uh, steep sides going up, flattened at the top. Um, oh, here's the definition for you. A plateau is a high steep, yep, uh, sound just like I just said, a high steep sided area rising above the surrounding land. Um, this is another land formation that you're going to be uh, tested on. Uh, it's called a canyon. This is actually the Grand Canyon. And this is the observation deck uh, by the Grand Canyon. There's uh, buildings here, and you could actually look down into the very, very deep canyon. I believe that the Grand Canyon is the uh, deepest canyon, uh, perhaps in the world. I'm not sure of that. I will double check that. But it's in the basin and range landform. So let's go back. And we're talking about this area right in here. Grand Canyon is right here, as you can see uh, on the map. All right, so let's go on. Rocky Mountains. Uh, this is where we have the highest mountains in North America. Uh, so I am recording this at school, so I'm going to have to talk over the classical music in the background uh, that I'm sure you guys are used to. Um, that's okay. It'll soothe you as you listen to my uh, listen to my annoying voice sometimes. Anyway, Great Plains are the opposite of the Rocky Mountains, and uh, it would be this, here, here's a picture of the Great Plains, very flat, total opposite of the mountains. Um, we get some of the greatest farmland in America in the Great Plains. And here are the interior plains, you see some more trees, you notice it's slightly different than this. Um, but basically, both are very flat, very good farmland. The plains slope towards a broad valley in the middle of the country. At the center of this valley is the Mississippi River, one of the largest rivers in the world and really the key to getting to the inside of this country. Um, the Mississippi uh, is rooted, let's see if I could go back to a picture, here we go. It's, this is the Mississippi River. It's rooted in Louisiana and it goes and it branches out to these smaller rivers, the Missouri River, um, the Ohio River, um, you know, all sorts of rivers, Colorado River. Uh, and basically, it, uh, Mississippi River goes through the plains. And there's a slight basin that happens uh, with the Mississippi. So getting back to this, the next landform that we're going to study is the Appalachian Mountains. And that is a smaller, older, uh, lower uh, mountain range than the other mountain ranges that we've talked about before, the Sierra Nevadas in California. Uh, or the Rockies, and this kind of looks like upstate New York, and that's because the Appalachian Mountains go to upstate New York. Um, it's very similar uh, to that, and it stretches all the way from Maine all the way down to Georgia and Alabama. Um, the final landform that, no, it's not the final, it's the next final landform that we're going to discuss is the Atlantic Coastal Plain. Um, it's east of the Appalachians. Um, the land drops into the Atlantic Coastal Plain. This is where we live, uh, which meets the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so right here, this stretches, it goes all the way down to Texas. So Texas, Louisiana, um, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, even goes all the way up to, wow, Maine. So it kind of goes uh, down the east coast of the United States and across the Gulf of Mexico, which is this body of water right in here. Um, the last uh, landform that we're going to see, uh, that we're going to talk about, is the Ozark Plateau. Now, you know what a plateau is. It's, it's a, um, a raised area of land with a flat top. Look at how big this plateau is. 
And this is very unique to the rest of the United States. It's very small compared to the other landforms, but it's very unique. Um, and let's get a picture of that. This is what it looks like. There weren't any good images of like where the land goes up, but this is at the top of the Ozark Plateau. Um, just remember, it's a huge uh, plateau in Arkansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma. Uh, and the way that you could remember where it is, it's Ozark and Ark for Arkansas. So you'll remember where it is. Um, climate. Uh, there's going to be a worksheet that I have uh, for climate uh, that we're going to do in class. But basically, I'll give you the shortened version of that. Um, each one of these regions has uh, a, a very different uh, climate. And there are different factors that can affect the climate. Um, trees and vegetation uh, have a, a very big influence on the climate. Um, and if there's mountains, mountains can really um, affect the winds. Um, this is called the tornado belt in here. Uh, it's flat land and you have mountains over here. And it causes really interesting winds with the jet stream, which comes from this direction. Don't worry, I'm not going to test you on the jet stream. But, um, you know, we have, very, this is the only area of the country where we see tornadoes a lot. Occasionally you'll get one or two in New York, but uh, that's like every few years. Um, Maine, and in the northern states, it's very cold. Um, Washington state is very known for its rainfall. Uh, it, it gets the, uh, the clouds blowing in this direction, and uh, it, it, seem, it, it has a lot of vegetation. Um, areas that have a lot of vegetation usually have more uh, rainfall. Um, let's see, Florida. Florida is known for uh, hurricanes and tropical storms. One of the things that you will be uh, tested on is the equator. And I put the picture of the globe here um, so that you can see where it would be. We're up here. This is North America. But the equator kind of goes right through here, through the tip, the upper tip of South America. And uh, basically, this is the hottest area of the world. Um, it gets the most direct sunlight. And um, up above, uh, up in here, there's um, the Tropic of uh, Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn down here. This area in here, um, on either side of the equator, gets very, very hot. And um, Florida gets somewhat of a tropical climate. Um, Hawaii gets a tropical climate. Um, that's in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, but 